Hey, 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 how you doing? This is Addict and Pastor Kent. And I'm here to tell you about NA slogans. Um, and read just for today. It's a bird, it's a plane, no, it's Superman. Yes, my name is Kent, and I do wear a super suit, but I have put it away because, no, I'm just kidding. I, today, got my Superman suit out, because now, on Blog Talk Radio, every Saturday, there's going to be a show on addictions. And that's what it's going to be about, is addictions. And we are going to do this this time. You know? So, let us read... May 22nd, Symptoms of a Spiritual Awakening. The steps lead to a spiritual awakening. This awakening is evident by the changes in our lives. This is talking about step 12. Step 12 goes like this. After having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these threats, we tried to carry this message to other addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So, it's about teaching others. We know how to recognize the disease of addiction in symptoms and indispensable because uncontrollable appetite for drugs. Those suffering exhibit self-centered, self-seeking behaviors. When our addiction was in the peak of activity, we were obviously in a great deal of pain. We recently judged ourselves as others and spent most of our time worrying and trying to control our outcomes. Just as the disease of addiction is evident by the defects, symptoms, so is our spiritual awakening made manifest by a certain obvious signs of a recovering addict. We may have observed a tendency to think and act spontaneously, a loss of interest or judging or in preparing the actions of someone else, an unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment, and frequent attacks of smiling. Oh God, the first time I smiled, man, I didn't know what was happening. A feeling come over me, my face lit up, my teeth showed, and man, I couldn't believe it, man. It was just phenomenal. If we see somebody exhibiting symptoms of spiritual awakening, we should be aware, be aware at such awakenings are cantankerous. Our best cause of action is to get close to those people. As we begin to hear frequent, overwhelming ex ex exposés of gratitude, and increased repetitiveness to love 
extended by a fellow members, an uncontrollable urge to re return this love, while realize that too have had a spiritual awakening. My strongest desire to have a spiritual awakening is watch for the symptoms and rejoice when I discover them. <coughs> when we're in a spiritual awakening, sometimes we don't even know it. You know, but the people around us say things like, you've changed. What's different about you? What do you have that I want? You know, they don't say that, but they imply that. They want to hang around us more. People want to be around us more. They want to communicate with us more. They want to socialize with us more because we have love, care, compassion, and understanding in our heart. God is all about love. That's what he's all about. He has absolutely nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with the situation around us. But what we feel in here, an outward manifestation of our glorification and edification and personification of showing love to others is undeniably uncontrollable urge for those to want to be around us. You ever have those people that are so positive and so upbeat that you want to be around them? That's what I'm talking about. That's what a spiritual awakening does. It enthrones people. It draws people to us. So as I said, we're going to look at some slogans. And the one thing that I'm asked a lot of times because I have... Uh, decades in the program is how did you do it my answer to that is very simple one day at a time you know I did it one day at a time and when I first came into this program it was every second then it became every minute then it became every hour and finally after a while it became days then weeks and months um, it's cool how it works. Now, in, I don't know about AA, but in NA, Principles Before Personality is right in our readings. And it says, after having had, uh, sorry, uh, we learn to put principles before personalities in our lives. After having had a spiritual awakening, we learned to put principles before our personalities. If you're in a room and somebody says something to you that just really, you want to knock their head off, um, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you know, we have to remember that there are asses in this world and there are asinine people and there are jerks and donkeys and mules you know and they're going to be in these rooms you know if you walk into a room with 25 people it only stands to reason you're going to have 25 different personalities so we need to be aware of that that everybody's not going to see eye to eye with us. And you know what? That's okay, because maybe they have a different perspective on something that may work for me. So stop being critical and judgmental 
and allow them into your life. You know? We need to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Um, what I do with this is um, I usually make a list of my gratitude list and then uh, I put all my negatives down because negatives come easy then I put a gratitude list and then I connect them back to back and see which one goes with which one and how I can work it out the program is not powered by a person or by what's in the rooms the program is powered by God you can use that in many different directions, good orderly directions, God over diversity, God or, or good over uh, destruction. There's so many ways you can do that. Um, you know, um, it's it's very important in recovery. We don't have to be miserable, you know. Um, we don't have to sit in misery and wallow in self-pity and denial. We've all heard the old saying, um, if you have lemons, make lemonade. It's so true that if you look at a situation and you come at it from the back part and go into it the back way and see what's there, you know, it's easy to find, you know. And if you slipped up, give yourself a break. There are people in this program who slip up all the time. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're a horrible person. And just because you don't like somebody in the room, that's okay too. Because we're not made to like everybody. We're not made to get along with everybody. May God bless and keep you.